Hello everyone, Bruce Elgord here with a short video talking about inputs, processes, and outputs, better known as IPO. So let me give you a little scenario. John recently moved from Washington State to Munich, Germany. In the United States, temperatures are measured in Fahrenheit, and in Germany, they're measured in Celsius. Now, John was a little bit confused because he's having a hard time making the conversion between the, the Celsius temperature and the Fahrenheit temperature and vice versa. So John wants to write a Python program that will take a temperature entered in Celsius and have it converted into Fahrenheit. Now, let's look at the screen here and the temperature entered in Celsius, that's an input, right? That's something that the user is going to have to enter into the program as an input right in order for the temperature conversion to take place right so the next thing you have is that's the input okay the process or processes and in this case in this short example there's just one process and that's going to be converting the temperature right in celsius to fahrenheit okay that's going to be the process and then the output right is going to be the temperature in Fahrenheit, right? So again, the input is going to be the temperature in Celsius. The process is going to be the conversion of the temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit. And the output is going to be the newly converted temperature in Fahrenheit. A very, you know, simple, simplistic example. Um, so let's dig in and write some code. So I'm going to hop into Python here. I'm going to create a new program. And I'm going to make it full screen right. Whoops. I'm going to make it full screen right now. Okay. I'm going to put a comment here. I'll say uh, convert.py. That's the name of the program. I'll put in my name. And I'll put in the IPO. And then I'll put input. I'll say uh, temp in Celsius. Then I'll say the process, process if I can spell, is going to be uh, convert to far, Fahrenheit. Okay, and then the output, right? The output is going to be the temp in uh, far. I was having problems spelling today, and I'll just make this uppercase. Okay, there we go. Now. Let me, so there's some comments that's going to help guide me through my code here. In fact, what I like to do is I like to include the comments as a starting point for my code. So let me show you this. So I'm going to define a, a function. Let's just call it main for now because that's simple. We can call it something else if we want. I'm going to indent my comments now. Comments, there they are. And the first thing we need to do, right, is input. Get the temperature in Celsius from the user. So let's create a val uh, variable, Celsius, and let's uh, put eval input, enter temperature in degrees Celsius. Okay. I'm going to put a little space here, by the way, and I'll show you why in a little bit. So that's, that's asking the user for the temperature in Celsius. So we have the input and we stored it in a variable named Celsius. The next thing we need to do is we need to convert into far Fahrenheit the uh, temperature in Celsius. And there's a formu formula for that and it happens to be 9 fifths times Celsius. And Celsius, by the way, is the value that got entered in by the user. And then we add 32. So that is the process that we defined above. And then the output, right, is going to be the converted temperature. So we could just put here Fahrenheit. And let's just do that. Okay. And now we need to call the newly created main function for the program to run. So let's click on File, Save. And I'm just going to give it a name, and I'll call it uh, convert. And now we're going to run it. 
from the menu Run, and then Run Module, or F5. It says enter a temperature in degrees Celsius. Okay, so let's do 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, that is 200 and 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And by the way, before you run this, you should have at least uh, two test scenarios where you know, right, when you run the program, and I'm going to run it again, I'm going to call main right from the uh, Python shell, and you should have another test case, right, for uh, degrees Celsius. So if I do zero, do you know what that is in Fahrenheit? It is 32 degrees, okay? So before I even run this program, I should know what my expected result are going to be. So congratulations, we wrote a small little temperature converter here, starting with an IPO, starting with the problem, identifying the inputs, processes, and outputs, and then going through and creating the code. Now, I, I do want to make this 32 here something a, a little bit more uh, meaningful, right? So what we may want to do here is we're going to say, uh, let's repeat the temperature, right? So let's say the uh, Celsius, the variable Celsius, in degrees, uh, f uh, 32 degrees Celsius, right, is comma, and I'll show you this and I'll explain it in a second, in Farin, Farin, Fahrenheit, boy, the spelling today, and let's go over here, okay, let's just make this capital, now let me run it and I'll explain it to you, let's go run, let's do run module, and let's do, uh, what should we do for, uh, let's do 100, so 100 Celsius is 212 in Fahrenheit, okay? So again, not perfect, but let me do this. Let's say, get rid of that space because we don't need it. Degrees Celsius is Fahrenheit degrees right here in Fahrenheit. Sorry about that. So let me run it and you can see. So let's again do 100. And now we see 100 degrees Celsius is 200 degrees in Fahrenheit. There you go. John's happy. So now when he wakes up and he hears, you know, the, the temperature outside, he can run his Python program and, you know, make the conversion. Now, you know, it's 2016 when I recorded this video, and we all know that we have, you know, weather apps on our phones and on our computers and such to do this for us. So just play along, okay? Just play along, everybody. So why did I get rid of those spaces, right? Before here, I had a space. Remember that when you have these commas in the print, in the print function right here, okay, it's going to put those spaces in for you automatically. Okay, so I'll leave this code here. You can press pause. It is right from the book. In fact, in the Zelly textbook, it's on page 30. Okay, if you have any questions, please let me know.